Before the SRT Trackhawk, before the modern day high performance trucks and SUVs, there was a king that reigned for three decades as the fastest accelerating factory truck. In its core form, it was a one trick pony, but that trick was you would see its tail ice if you raced it. Welcome to Forgotten Legends. Today's video is brought to you by Keeps. Keeps is a subscription-based hair loss treatment to help men keep their hair. Two out of three guys will experience some form of hair loss by the age of 35, and Keeps helps combat that with clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and is delivered straight to your door at about half the cost of traditional pharmacies. You get 24-7 care and support network of expert medical advisors and care specialists to help you reach your goals. They are a one-stop shop for everything you need to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just better care of your your hair in general, and most Keeps customers notice results within six months of starting treatment. Hair loss stops with Keeps, so to get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash 337speed or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash 337speed. Throughout the 1980s, General Motors were not only experimenting with turbocharging, they were absolutely dominating with it. The Buick Grand National Experimental was the quickest accelerating car in America, even faster than the standard C4 Corvette. The Corvette also had a trick up its sleeve with the B2K option, which meant after production in Bowling Green, it was sent to Callaway to get twin turbochargers and 400 horsepower. By 1987, this turbocharging revolution would reach an unlikely candidate, GMC. Assistant Chief Designer William Davis would sketch a white GMC S15 with Super Truck inscribed on the bed. Two years later, this sketch would blossom into fruition with a fully functioning concept for the 1989 Chicago Auto Show, being powered by the same LC2 3.8 liter turbo V6 found in the Grand National and Turbo Trans Am. The LC2 was actually underreported in power to appease the big cousin, the Corvette, when in actuality, it produced 301 horsepower on the engine dyno at the PAS facility. To spread awareness of the Cyclone, GMC truck with the help of legendary Gil Banks would break a world record with the GMC S15 that was a test bed to explore the Chevy 4.3 liter V6 architecture. The Banks team bored and stroked the 4.3 liter V6 to 5 liters, which was the max displacement rule for the record attempt. To increase power even further, the S15 used a radical ram air induction system, which used twin front intakes that would force air over heat exchangers cooled by circulated ice water from the cooler in the bed of the truck. And the 5 liter V6 made 549 horsepower, and this was without turbos. The Cyclone LSR, or land speed record, went on to take 5 records, including the FIA International World Speed Record of 194 miles per hour. GMC Truck would partner with Production Automotive Services, or PAS, the same company which built the 1989 Turbo Trans Am and used the 4.3 SS truck for engine and drivetrain testing. In 1991, the Cyclone debuted with the LB4 power plant, which shared no architecture with the 3.8 liter Buick Turbo V6. Rather, the 4.3 was just a 350 small block with two cylinders removed, still retaining the four inch bore and 3.48 inch stroke. What differed from the standard 4.3 V6 found in the S15 was the dished hyper eutectic pistons, which lowered compression from 9.3 down to 8.35 to one. Attached to the engine was a Mitsubishi TDO 6-17C single turbocharger feeding a Garrett air-to-water intercooler with 14 PSI of boost, which even today water-to-air intercoolers are the standard on higher performance boosted engines. Combined with the Corvette's twin-bore TPI throttle body and batch fire fuel injection, output was conservative at 280 horsepower and 350 pound-feet of torque. Just as important as the power was getting it to the ground, which the Cyclone featured a Borg Warner 4472 all-wheel drive transfer case with a 35% front and 65% rear split, giving power to all four wheels. Also, the stall speed in the torque converter in the 700R4 was increased to 2100 RPM over the 1800, which meant that the Cyclone could get into boost quicker without balking down and acceleration was absolutely mental. 
It boasted a 4.3 second 0 to 60 with a 13.4 second quarter mile, making it the fastest truck ever produced, and GMC literally marketed the truck as such, sometimes even taking it too far, comparing it to like the Porsche 911. Most famously, it out-accelerated the Ferrari 348 TS in testing in the September 1991 issue of Car and Driver. The impressive whole shot of the Cyclone would make it the fastest accelerating truck for 30 years, only to be beaten by the Ram TRX with 417 more horsepower and 4 more gears. Now the Cyclone did have its faults, the chassis was only rated to haul 500 pounds which eliminated the utility of it being a pickup truck. Also the truck explicitly stated it wasn't for off-road use either, which made the Cyclone purely a one-trick pony to absolutely destroy anything from a dig. If you wanted a more usable Cyclone, then in 1992 there was the Typhoon. The Typhoon was based on the Jimmy, which gave it more cargo space, a higher load capacity thanks to the air suspension, and can still outperform the Mustang GT and Ferrari 348 with a 5.3 second 0 to 60 thanks to the exact same powertrain from the Cyclone. Also, it was available in multiple colors, which the Cyclone was destined to receive, but was canceled due to poor sales. The Cyclone only had a full model run in 1991 with 2,995 units and three the following year. The Typhoon, however, had a much more promising run with 4,697 units across two model years of 1992 and 1993. Even with the Cyclone and Typhoon short run, it built a cult following very quickly. In 2021, the name would reappear, but not built by GMC, rather built by Special Vehicle Engineering, formerly known as SLP, which was absolutely the dominant aftermarket part supplier in the 90s for Camaros, Corvettes, and Firebirds. The new SVE Cyclone ditches the V6 found in the GMC Canyon for an L83 LT-based small block V8 that is centrifugally supercharged. The stock rotating assembly is upgraded to 4340 steel H-beam connecting rods and forged aluminum pistons. A custom ground camshaft with a larger fuel lobe to feed the direct injectors with more fuel. The engine output is 750 horsepower, which is two and a half times more power than the original Cyclone, and the power meets the ground through a full-time all-wheel drive system, which splits the torque 38% in the front and 62% in the rear. Zero to 60 is sub four seconds, and even though it's not built by GMC, it's still offered with a three-year warranty. Even though the sound is far different from the original 4.3 liter V6 turbo in the 1991 Cyclone, this is a beautiful homage to the original that will surprise even the most cockiest Corvette owner, just like in 1991. The Cyclone and Typhoon are the original sport trucks, practically useless other than putting a smile on your face, and that's really all the utility it ever needs.